Good evening guys and welcome to Harry's Half Hour where I'll be chatting tonight with PDC tour card holder and World Championship debutant this year, Callan Riggs. Just going to wait for Callan to jump on um, to say Callan tonight and then I've got three more guests on this week. I've got um, Laura, uh, Laroon and Stanley on tomorrow evening, Laura Turner on tomorrow, uh, the night after and I have Gary Thompson on Friday evening. Just waiting for Callan to come on. Uh, right, there we go. Just gonna bring Callan. Yo! Yo, you alright Callan? How are you doing buddy? Yeah, not bad. Let us just set this up quickly. Yeah, no worries pal. Sorted. Oh! Nice one. How are you doing anyway? You alright? Yeah, I'm not bad. Not bad. Off. Um, so coming back off, obviously from the back of the world champs, how was it for you, especially with these COVID restrictions? Yeah, it was. It was awful. Like I, I played all right my first game, and then just could not get myself up to play weird with no fans. It was just, it, just not the same anymore. Yeah. Um. Obviously during the event, uh, without uh, without uh, the world champs comes controversy, but uh. Gary Anderson made comments regarding obviously Solivic's tactics in the game after he sort of he referred to Wayne Meidel's a numpty. Hmm. What do you, what's your sort of stand on Gary's comments then? Do you agree with what he said in some parts or well, I don't know, it's it's different perspective. So I played James Bailey and I I said he was doing tactics with me, but I got a lot of criticism from people over his way saying that uh, it's the way he plays. It's the first time I've ever seen him play, so if that is how we play, then uh, I am sorry for what I said. But in, in the moment in time, when I'm quite a quick player, you think if they're slowing you down, then that's what they're trying to do. Obviously, a win on debut against James, as you just mentioned. What was your feelings after the match? Was it relief and obviously excitement as well? Yeah, because um, I had a really poor start of the year regarding um, the Pro Tour. And, you know, I... There could have been a lot worse at draws than James, but obviously I heard he was a good player and he's obviously done well enough to qualify. So it's it's one of them where you think it's a good draw, but you don't know what he's capable of. Yeah. I was walking onto that stage. The It's a institute, really, of darts, the Ali Pali stage. Even without that crowd, was it quite a daunting experience? Yeah. Obviously, I played... Two years ago, when there was a crowd there, and the atmosphere was unbelievable. And then going from a seeing a full house crowd to absolutely no crowd, it's it's not the same, like. Yeah, for um, becoming a tour card holder, you came through the obviously youth system development tour. You obviously won a development tour back in twenty nineteen. But did you also find yourself doing BDO side stuff, so like the youth events and maybe mm. some of the men's events? I did, yeah. When I first started, uh, I'd done a lot of the BDO events, uh, youth-wise. I won a lot of them. The only two I didn't, <clears throat> I didn't win was the World Masters and the World Youth Championships. The first year, the World Youth went on. Uh, Harry Ward lost in the final. Harry beat me in the semis. Yeah. Um. Obviously, looking at the World Champs this year, it was quite. Um... Interesting to say the least. Obviously, had Wadey in the nine dart and then getting losing the match to Stephen Bunting. Stephen mm. Bunting was looking really awesome this year. So out of that final four, then you had obviously Gerwin Price, Gary Anderson, um, Chizzy, and Stephen Bunting. Out of them, who did you want to win? Who was your sort of pick? It was between who I wanted to win was it was Chizzy or Gary. I, I did on with both of them. I did on with Bunting quite well. I don't speak to Gezi as much. Um, I, yeah. I have spoken to him, but I speak to Chizzy and Gary probably the most than I do the other two. Uh, aside from, obviously, the Worlds, um, what, what events do you really want to qualify for this year? Obviously, you want to qualify for all the TV majors, but is there any in particular that stands out for you? Um, me, well, I, I did say this year I want to make four majors. Obviously, the UK Open is one of them that we're guaranteed in as tour card holders. So I would like to make at least another three, I would say. Three three would do. 
Is there any in particular, obviously, apart from the world? Obviously, you've got like the Worlds, the players, the Euros. I, I would like the match play and um, Grand Prix, but it's just little steps you have to see. Obviously, after the when we start playing again, where the updated tables are and how you're doing in it. So, how did it, obviously, take it back to the start, how did it all actually start for you, darts in general? Um, well, I, I used to always like ride a, ride a BMX. I was quite good on them. I was sponsored on a BMX. But I was always getting myself into a little bit of like, trouble. So I was with the wrong people. And my granddad just asked me, do you want to come to the local club on a Thursday night to play? And it was like a cause league, which had Chris Doby, um, Ryan Joyce, a load of good players. And I was, yeah, whatever. And uh, my first ever game of darts was actually against Ryan Joyce. So that was, that was, Nice, but um, baptism. Yeah, but now nah, um, I've always liked it, even when I was a kid. But I never really played it serious, and I started winning a few games there, and I started going to a little bit competitions up home, and then I just kind of grew it. And I was, I was, I, I liked doing this more than I did the the biting. Um. So what were your first set of darts? Do you remember they, the first? They were you... Phil Taylor, the long gold barrel that he had. Them. Phase two. Yeah. Phase two. Yeah. Someone will correct me if I'm wrong. Th- but... The ones he lost in the final to Barney with, I think, was my first set. Yeah. But like I said, I'm sure someone will, there'll be someone on this, uh, on the comments who know what darts we're talking about. I'm going to go with phase two, but if I'm wrong, someone can correct me. <laughs> um, speaking of darts, you've recently just had your own set of darts released as arranged by Unicorn. How did that feel knowing that your products can be available to the public it was a bit surreal like i, I never really thought of it like that because i know obviously some people take time as in what data like to use and all this but i had my set and i went to a challenge tour weekend and then um, well the hampton and my darts came friday morning my prototypes mm. so i took them down and i lost i think i lost first round in there the first three events so i used my new ones in the last event and i won it so I just, I've stuck with the prototype since and then they've obviously done a, a little more few changes and I've started using my regular ones now. Um, aside from yourself, who in your opinion is the best player in the North East? Not Chris Doby. Anyone but Chris Doby. <laughs> nah, um, we'll get on, but obviously you can't go any further than Glenn, can you? Nah, he's just absolute gold, isn't he? So, it, yeah, I would say it's between Glenn... It's it's got to be Glenn, but I would say Chris is second, hundred hundred percent. As much as that hurts me to say, but Chris is definitely second. Uh, Luke Rowe just corrected me. Had gold phase one, two, and three. So choose Luke. And I, I I was I was hoping Luke would be on because I knew he him or Jack Romney had there. Um, but uh, progressing from the development, so obviously he went on to get a tour card through. Obviously, just playing PDC. Um, who from the players you've seen yourself on the development tour have got the ability to follow in your footsteps of progressive, making that progression of development tour to tour card holder? That hasn't got a tour card? Yeah. Is there any standout players for you who haven't got a tour card who you can see getting one in the future? Keen Barry's just got one. Um, Joe Davis, possibly. He's, he's a good player. Um... Ooh. I'm trying to think of someone I, I, I can't beat. <laughs> On the development tour, who's it? Nathan Rafferty. I would say Nathan Rafferty. Yeah, Rafferty. Uh, Lennon Hand has just asked, hardest opponent played? Van Gerwen. Van Gerwen. Um, I was going to say actually about that. I forgot about that. You were, was it Pro Tour this year? You I've... beat him and you had a one plus average on it. Oh, yeah, Louis Williams, he's another good player. I think he'll get one. Um, yeah, I've played him twice this year on the Pro Tours, and I don't know, I don't know if you're not long ago, and I, but obviously he was the best player in the world, and I lost 6-4 with 107 average, and I beat him with 101. And I, I, I just shows to me that I do deserve to be there, um, and I can live with the best. Yeah, obviously comes with sort of being 
like TV events and what have you. Have you found anything is different? Have you had to sign any autographs yet or take any pictures with people? Not take pictures. I, I did take a couple at the UK Open last year and we were in Coventry for the players and I was going to play Peter Wright and there was a kid, two people at the front of the venue and he got everyone to sign um, four photos that he had printed off. And then someone messaged us not long ago and they were on eBay. So there's only four I've, I've signed. I was like, oh, well. Michelle Bullock has asked, what, well, um, it says, how long do you spend practising each day? Five minutes at the most. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm not the biggest practice at, at all. Um, but if I have got something coming up, I, I will practise about two hours a day. Yeah. So I do it in, I'll only practise at the most 15 minutes. Like I, I can't sit there and do it on my own for two hours. It just bores me practising. So I've got a couple of questions that's coming in. Scott Jackson's asked Station A or Station B. I don't know if that's in <laughs> reference to... Station B. TV lanes. Station B. Station B. There you go, Scott. John Hilton has asked, it's away from darts, actually. Biggest regret? I mean, unless it is darts related, but... If it's darts related, biggest regret. Um... We'll say in general, and if you're struggling, so I don't, I don't think that was like I said. I don't think that was just based around the darts thing. Just biggest regret in general. Getting back on a bite in lockdown and breaking my foot. <laughs> you just got tempted. I'd be I, I did. I, within a week, I've I broke my foot, and then a week later, I got had an operation, got a metal plate in it now. So, but that's fun in airports. Oh, it's awful. I, 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 I wouldn't wish to... if it was this year you won't you won't have that chance yet, but no. Um obviously you've played for England at youth level, you played with some awesome players. Um you had players such as Owen Maiden, Dan Perry, Danny Ashton, Bo Greaves. Owen Owen, How was it Owen that Maiden. Ball for England? Owen Maiden, not Owen Maiden, no. I, I love Owen, but no, he's a he's a penis. He is a penis. <laughs> I think he's watching actually, so no. I've sort of inflated his ego and you've just popped it there. <laughs> no, nah, I, sh I share with the one on the development tour, like we, we are good friends, but some of the some of the banter me and him have is unbelievable. So, well, uh, Tommy Lishman's put biggest regret losing to him. Ginger bastard. And Lisa Ashton has put um Will you be joining again? I can't. Will you be joining in our card games again? No, they fixed that. I got cheated. <laughs> Did they uh, swindle you? No, I didn't have a clue what game they were playing. They were trying to get us in for... Nah, nah. <laughs> got his in out there. John Hilton did come back with it. was darts related, sorry. So what... He is regretting that. Don't say Tommy Lillian, because you, you will inflate Tommy's ego. Probably bottle and cue school two years in a row. Fair enough. Um, what else we got? Uh, moving, we'll move on from the darts, as I like to do. You know, you're probably sick of hearing about darts all the time. Other sports, obviously, being a Newcastle lad and having to suffer. How was things at the minute with Newcastle? Well, I watched the first half yesterday and I turned it off. I got that ball of it. Just, I, I've got, I mean, I've got no interest in watching eight men at the back. Yeah. Obviously, it must be so frustrating as a Newcastle fan. I mean, it's one of them where the success they had in the 90s, obviously, be, be, probably before your time, and then that is challenging titles then, sort of the early 2000s. Um, you know, you had the likes of Sheerans, uh, what have you. And it must have been just so frustrating because in that time, in the early 2000s, Newcastle were up there, mm. and then all of a sudden, it just... Taking a really bad nosedive. Well, it's, it, I don't know. Like when when Steve Bruce came in, everyone was slating him. I I said give him a chance, but now he's just he's just trying his hardest for it to stay up and playing eight at the back and trying to hoof a ball up the Callum Wilson to get on the end of it. It's not going to work. Not in the Premier League. So, uh, it would be probably in the Championship, but not the Prem. Personally, what I've seen in Newcastle, Joe Linton needs to go. Uh, He's like a baby giraffe. He's horrific. Him, Mike Ashley and Bruce, they all need to go. I was just about to say what he views on Mike Ashley. He's a prick. I can't imagine him being a popular man in Newcastle. No, he's not. He's a prick. Um, 
I mean, I have a bit of a soft spot for Newcastle because, you know, black and white colours. Yeah. And I'm hoping red and whites are watching. And I really hope I'm winding them up with that. But I have a soft spot for Newcastle United because, well, my mum used to like them because of Shearer. <laughs> and, um, but like you say, black and white are FC for me. So I'll always like to see them stay up. Oh, I think we've got one of the best fan base in the world, but we've got some good players, like, but they, they just can't seem to work together. Trumel has just put, ask Callum, would he <laughs> rather have a dark fruit than a white? Oh, it, it's, an, it's, it's an inside joke. <laughs> oh, dear. I mean, you've pretty much answered the question, but is Bruce the right man for the job if he no. sorts his tax? Nah, just needs to go. Yeah, probably at the start you've done all right, but not now. Is there anyone who who you'd like to see sort of realistically as a manager, been able to come in? At, at any point, any what any manager that likes to tackle football, like it's. Just... I mean, I was speaking to I was speaking to Jamie Hughes last night, and we were saying about uh, the Wolves manager, and he said I think he's taken them as far as they can go because I think mm. there's I think he said the sort of. Kitty is a bit tight. The pair strings are a bit tight. Would he be someone you'd like to see at the Reigns in Newcastle? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I probably would like to see him. He's a good manager. He's, but I do agree. I think he's got Wolves as far as Wolves can get with them players. And obviously they've lost Jimenez now. And I think he'll generally have to retire. So Yeah, it's a shame when something like that happens, especially with a striker. It's Mason Ham has just put Callan for manager. Mason Ham has a kebab litten freak. <laughs> um, this is a question you probably don't want to hear is relegation a possibility for Newcastle yep and at the yep. minute yeah I know we're, we're good I think four or six points clear but we've got a bad run of games coming up and I just can't see we're, we're going to be fighting 18th I think um, obviously if Mike Castle was to go I mean I know it's been on the cards on the card, so to speak. But um, there's always talks of Mike Ashley going. And, but can you ever see Newcastle returning to what they used to be? Sort of in the 90s and early 2000s? Can you, if a, new, if, if a takeover was happening? I would, I would love to see it, but I can't. I really can't. I think if, if a takeover happened, give it maybe five years, one might be contesting European football, but no, nah, not until Ashley goes. With obviously the first lockdown came the home tour, and um, is that something you did yourself? I did, yeah, I played it, but I would never play it again. I I, I, mean, I can't I'm... get away with playing online, playing at home or nothing. It just bores me because there's too many, there's too many cheats around, and it it, it is yeah. it is stupid. But I played in a charity event, and I played. I was two nil up in a race to three, and this kid went three one forties out, one eighty two one forties out. And, they are, I just can't be bothered. If that's what it's going to be for a charity competition, then fair play. Yeah, people uh, People often see the name and they think, oh, I'm going to have to pull some out of the bag. They either have to play properly or they decide to go the other way, which is cheat. I mean, there's been some big, big stories about cheating going on in online darts and I just can't bother with it. No. I'll play my mates, but that's it. I'll do, I'll do that. I'll have a practice with some of my mates. I had a practice game with one the other day and that's the first time I've picked up my dart since Wade beat me. So, I've, it's like I say, I'm not the biggest part of the side, but I need to... When, if the pubs are open, though, I'm always in the pub. I enjoy going down and playing snooker, pool, and I'll have a game of darts just to get out of the house. Um, obviously, like, with the uh, lockdown, not many people could do out. Was you watching a lot of Netflix series or Amazon Prime series or whatever? Well, I was, I was just, I was stuck up in bed with a broken foot. I was just watching a lot of YouTube. Yeah, I was watching a bit Netflix, but I'm not a big fan of watching TV, to be honest. Yeah. Obviously, I, I see on Facebook a lot, you do play a lot of Warzone. Do you take the console away with you when you're on tour? Um, it depends, because I share with um, Luke Woodhouse, and he'll, one weekend he'll bring his Xbox, and then I'll bring my PlayStation. Just It just depends. So, but yeah, we do take them away and we do, we, we don't really play games, it's only FIFA we'll play when we're down there or we'll watch like the football on Sky BT when we're down, so it's not too bad. 
Munro away. Fee for that defence to take the spoils. Me. Out of me and look me. Comfortably or is it quite tight games? Um but they're mostly tight games, but some games I will smash them. But he, I think he has beat us once when we were in Germany when I took my PlayStation over. I think that was the only time he beat us. We'll move on then. I've got a quick fire on what I do with all my guests. So it's just definitely a question like Pepsi or Coke, whatever. So we'll start off KFC or Nando's? Nando's. Tea or coffee? Coffee. Gin or vodka? Both. Messi or Ronaldo? Ronaldo. I think I've had every single guest, every one has said, everyone said Ronaldo. <laughs> I, 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 love, I love them both. I love watching them both. But until Messi proves it in two or three different leads, then I'll always say Ronaldo. That, that's the argument in it, that Ronaldo has done it in Premier League, he's done it in the Italian League, yeah, he's done it in La Liga. It, it, people say Messi's just did once. the Spanish League's the hardest league. It, it might be, but I think English football is the most competitive league. Because the Spanish, it's always going to be between Barca and Madrid. The, the Italian lead, it's going to be mostly Juventus. So, but the Prem, it's I was like the last few years, it's been just Man City, Liverpool, close. They won it last year, but um, it's I like watching all the Premier League teams really. Bradley Brooks has just said, "Ask him how bad he is at Warzone." Not as bad as Ash Williams. I'm not as bad as Ash Williams. <laughs> Favourite aftershave? Um, what's here? One million. One million. Classic. Best mate on tour? Probably Luke Woodhouse. I'm friends with a lot of them, but I share with Luke and I speak to him the most. Favourite band or artist? I do listen to a lot of Dappy, so I'll probably say Dappy. Dappy. <laughs> Um, your favourite film, but what I'll go on is what a film you could put on and just watch and watch and watch it. It'll never get old. The Warriors. That's a good, that is a good shout, to be fair. Music, Guilty Pleasure. <sighs> eh. I don't know. I don't know, I haven't got an answer for that. I'll, I'll come back to that one. Favourite all-time player? Thought. Probably, yeah. probably Phil Taylor. Can't go wrong with him. Uh, Lennon Hand has just taken this question right out of my mouth, what I was about to ask. Ask him who he thinks is the best walk-on. <laughs> it, it depends, though. Like, Peter Wright gets the crowd going. You've got Daryl Journey singing with the crowd. I'd, I'd probably say Daryl Journey. Yeah, I think for entertainment value, it's one of the dancing lads, Devin Peterson, mm. obviously Dimitri. Then you've got Peter Wright. I think Peter Wright topped it this year by coming on first round of the World Champs. Mm. Yeah, that, that was great. I was in the hotel watching that. Yeah, it was, that was good. <laughs> um, but I think for me, all the time, it's got to be Taylor's because as soon as you hear that, like the trumpet, the uh, orchestra, or whatever it is, the uh, trumpets, mm. you just knew straight away that was just like, it was like a wall of noise. It's almost like a team going to Old Trafford back in the day. Mm. And as soon as you walk out of that tunnel, it's the equivalent of Taylor walking out onto stage. Yeah, very very true, yeah. 100%. Yeah, I can see that. We'll go back to the music guilty pleasure then. So there's one, one band or artist or a particular genre of music that you don't really want people to know you listen to. I don't... I listen to a lot of different music, though. Um I probably don't, my mates don't hear me listening to Coldplay, I would say. I listen to a lot of Coldplay in the house. Not wrong with a bit of Coldplay. But like all my mates, like that MC, crap, bollocks. It's, no, it's not me. MC, Devo. No, it's bollocks. But yeah, no, uh, that wraps up that and that wraps up this interview. So, Callan. Thank you very much for coming on, buddy. No worries, mate. Nice speaking to you. That, um, all the best for 2021 and hope to see you back in the TV majors. Yeah, hopefully. Thank you very much. Tune in tomorrow, guys. Well, <laughs> I'll be chatting to Lorraine Wynn Stanley at the same time, 8 o'clock. So keep an eye out for that one. Thank you very much. And again, Callum.
Cheers, buddy. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.